So the Grand Prix is over and what an absolutely exciting event. The second day was seriously sensational. Uh, as I sit here after watching until all hours of the morning, the marks still aren't up for all the horses officially, but who cares about the marks when we think about the horses? And Vallegro was absolutely sensational every way. I cannot say I've seen a better Grand Prix test in my life. It was so regular, so even, so confident, so effortless. And uh, the rider was just absolutely beautiful. Charlotte sits immaculately. The contact was sensational, even though she held the uh, curb rein at the bottom. It was certainly not being strong in any way, and I thought that the whole test was exceptional. Uh, Damon Hill and Parzival, very, very close for second and third. Parzival just getting ahead. Uh, Damon Hill getting a little bit stuck in the one-time changes towards the end. And uh, perhaps the PRF a little bit more forward, with Parzival's PRF so established and so on the spot, so regular and so active. It was an absolute treat to see. Again, with Parzival, who occasionally we criticise for being a little strong in the contact and for towing the rider along a little bit, today we certainly didn't see any of that. It was a, a very, very good test and most impressive. Uh, considering there was a cloud over the horse's head after he didn't trot up so well at the World uh, Cup final in Sir Toggenbosch, and there was much speculation that he was not going to be sound. He was absolutely perfect in every way. He's a fabulous horse and uh, inspiring to see. Uh, Damon Hill, as I said, a few little mistakes along the way. Ravel, sensational. Uh, maybe a little bit lazy in the hind legs in the extended trot, but in the passage and piaf and all the other parts of the test, very confident, very easy going. Just, just lacks that little bit of sitting and that feeling of power and push, uh, which the, the horses above him tended to have. Again, as I said before, uh, Desperados and uh, Christina Sprayer, um, the black horse with the most elastic and beautiful paces, but for me, still a little bit underdone in the collection. Uh, he's built a little bit with the hocks out behind and a tail that doesn't lend itself to encouraging a feeling of him sitting. It's a little bit high set and a little bit on the move all the time. So for me, the back end lacks a little bit, but the front end expressive and beautiful. Of course, I love Digby. I think he's a great horse, and I think uh, Princess Natalie rides beautifully, and the horse is just the epitome of dressage. Uh, there were so many beautiful horses. I think Patrick Kittle did a great job, uh, even though he didn't get so many fantastic marks. He uh, certainly did a really good job. And, of course, our own Mary Hannah with Sunset. It was a pleasure to see her ride through the test. I think the horse has improved out of sight. The marks haven't gone up very much, which is a little disappointing for us, and probably more so for Mary, I think she's uh, riding him better than ever. The test looked very confident. I can only say that the judges saw occasionally a little inconsistency in the frame. And uh, maybe that's what they didn't like. I think he still needs to show a little bit more collection, a little bit more closed frame, and a little more over the back and engaged hind leg. But for goodness sake, what horse doesn't need to be like that? I think he's elegant, expressive, and I think she was really toughly marked. I think... Uh, I guess I can be a little bit biased being an Australian, but I think that the case is she was a little toughly marked. Um, of course, there were great other tests. The grey horse that I love, Ecuador, he looked so pleasant and easy going. I, uh, I was really impressed with Edward Gall, and of course, who wouldn't be in his fabulous riding of the new horse undercover. Uh, Valentina Trooper and the beautiful bay horse, little pocket rocket. It was great, more relaxed today than I've seen him. Of course, Don Aurelio, I really love that horse. The front end and the front legs are just magnificent. The schooling, the training, the conditioning, the whole look, the whole picture, sensational. I could go on and on. Um, Fuego, for, uh, he's not my most favourite, but of course, you've got to admire the way that he goes and did a great job. Um, Victoria Max Terreur and Augustin, it was fantastic. The Americans were great. Um, Artemis, he did a really super little test. Great PR for Passage. Every single horse. It was exciting. Um, I, uh, I'm blown away. I think the standard is so high and the quality is so good and there's just a hair's breadth between the f top handful of horses and that, that whole list could switch around. I'm still barracking for Damon Hill, but I think I've got to admit that Vallegro and uh, um, 
at Linda's Horse Parsifal today was superior. Congratulations to all you guys that have sat up and watched it from beginning to end. Uh, I'll try and go to sleep now and uh, get up in the morning and have another look at the scores. I'm very excited to see the scores. I think the judging has been uh, on par. I think it's great. I think there's a few of the lower horses perhaps could have got a few more marks. But still, um, fabulous, fabulous competition. Fabulous day. And uh, a bit of a sad day for the Australians because uh, none of them have got through to the Grand Prix Special. That is really sad. And uh, they did a great job. It was the best team, I think, that we've fielded in dressage at the Olympics in dressage ever. And uh, they certainly deserve respect. They did a great job. They did us proud. And uh, they will really benefit from that experience. Um, so until I get back to you again with the Grand Prix Special, I hope you enjoyed the coverage from EQ Life. Uh, sleep well or wake up well. Enjoy looking at the scores, enjoy your horses and your dressage, enjoy watching it, and I'll speak to you soon.